Triangle's hard. We can't fight him, brother. Triangle definitely showed up, man. Yeah, you just heard it from wide receiver Joshua Cephas. What a gritty and gutsy win by the UTSA Roadrunners in the Alamo Dome, and the team's grit was personified by the toughness of quarterback Frank Harris. The Roadrunners took a 3-0 lead into the second quarter, and they'd extend it as Rocco Griffin takes it in from 20 yards out. But as Coach Trailer told us all week, Texas State was ready for a fist fight. Former Brennan Bear Jamil Jeter made it a 10-7 ball game. And then here's where things got scary for UTSA fans. Frank Harris comes up hobbling a little bit as he lets that one go. A great catch by Tyke Ogle Kellogg, but Harris is on the turf in obvious pain. He'd walk off the field on his own and refuse to take the cart. He gets some x-rays on his left knee and was given the all clear. Frank would grit through it in the second half and with just over three minutes in the third quarter he's coming right at us and drops it in the bucket for Willie McCoy. Great catch as UTSA goes up 17-7. They let her at it later at a field goal and the defense was excellent the entire game. Former Smithson Valley Ranger Trey Moore comes up with the sack to force Texas State's fourth punt of the second half and Convorian Bards would go over the century mark and essentially put this game on ice with this run as the Roadrunners win the I-35 rivalry 20 to 13, the final from the Dome. These are the wins that you, that you live and die by. Um, the grit that we showed, the toughness that we showed throughout the whole game, the four minute offense that we performed. Um, we didn't get the ball back to those guys. So this is credit to the, to the defense and getting the ball to us and, and the offense, um, just killing the clock. He had to play through a lot of pain and uh, he did that. I really didn't want to put him back out there. That kid is just magic. And I, I know, I think y'all could probably tell just by the way our play calls, we, we had we had to call the game a different way in the second half just to make sure he was okay, you know. And uh, he did an unbelievable job being a pocket quarterback. And uh, uh, he just, it's just who he is. And San Antonio answered the call to help the Roadrunners. After a tough loss to Houston, the announced attendance for today's game was 49,392, the second largest crowd in UTSA football history. And the turnout was not lost on Coach Trailer and the team. It was loud. It was deafening in there. So I, I've heard we're right at 50,000. Unbelievable job by our marketing, our ticket people. We lost. We lost a tough, heartbreaking game last week. And you come back, most places, they don't show back up when you do that. And I was just, it was grit by a lot of people today, by a lot of people. Well, the Roadrunners will now try and heal up quickly. They got a short week and then a tough test next Friday. When the Army Black Knights come into town, that game is set for 6 o'clock from the Dome. Well, what a scene in Tuscaloosa tonight. The Longhorns haven't had much success against opponents ranked in the top five. Just one in eight tries for Steve Sarkeesian in the third quarter. Jalen Milrow for Alabama going deep and it's there for Jermaine Burton and the tie jumps in front right before the fourth quarter. But the Horns respond. Quinn Ewers hits Adonai Mitchell and Texas goes back in front by four. The Texas defense was great. Next possession for Bama and the Horns come up with their second interception. Jared Thompson gets a nice return here, sets up a short score for Texas and they go up by 11. Now the Tide needed a quick response and they get it when Milrow, after picking up the loose snap there, finds Amari Niblack, who weaves his way through the Texas defense and he's in to score. And these two teams are trading haymakers back in the fourth. And then the last one though, belonging to Quinn Ewers in Texas, going for the knockout and he gets it to Adonai Mitchell again. A 39 yard touchdown pass, Ewers third pass passing touchdown of the night and the Horns upset Big Bad Bama. 34 to 24. The Aggies were off to a good start in Miami today against the Hurricanes. Amari Daniels gives A&M a 10 point lead, but the Canes took control after that. Tyler Van Dykes threw for five touchdowns. This one right there to Jacoby George in Miami. David never gave up the lead after that. In the third quarter after Texas A&M field goal, look at the speed from Bashard Smith. He turns on the afterburners and we wouldn't be showing to you if he didn't make it. 98 yards on the kickoff return as the Canes get revenge over the Aggies, 48 to 33. And a wild finish in Lubbock. After losing on the road to Wyoming, the Texas Tech Red Raiders had an upset bid against 13th ranked Oregon. There were five lead changes in the game. A lot of them happened late, but the Tech's defense can't stop the Ducks from getting into field goal range. They jump back in front on that field goal try. The Ducks would add a touchdown on a pick six, and Texas Tech now falls to 0-2 to start the season. 
Colorado beats Nebraska today. Coach Prime now 2-0 for the Buffs. Houston losing this week in triple overtime to the Rice Owls. How about that? And UIW gets the first head coaching win for Clint Killo over Northern Colorado.